Good morning. Um, seen most of you here from yesterday. If you haven't been, I talked a little bit about the history of Hapkido. Um, much of the publicity about Hapkido has come to us through films and through uh, certain certain teachers that emphasize kind of the dramatic um, and often painful aspect of it. What I'd like to do today is to introduce you a little bit more to its history and uh, some of the basic concepts that I think are at the core of Hapkido. One of the main ones, um, as we look at the history, is there were two main arts that came together to form Hapkido. One was Daitoryu Aiki Jiu Jitsu, um, the other, uh, which we've seen some amazing today and yesterday, um, and then the other is Cheng Musul, Royal Court Martial Arts. Now when I first came across this, I was a little confused. I, I didn't know exactly what it was and I came across a book called the Moye Tobu Tongji and it was written in 1796 in Korea and it was kind of the last thing to be written about Korean martial arts before a long period of time um, without, without much written about Korean martial arts and it names a couple of basic sources and the main one was what's called Neje Kwanba and from China they sent a general, General Chi Ji Kong, and he taught the forces in Korea uh, this Nei Jie Quan Ba. Um, in Chinese we say Nei Jie Chuan Fa, and Nei Jie Chuan Fa is a predecessor to Tai Chi Chuan. And they even go to start to talk about it, uh, about the principles of Nei Jie Chuan Fa, and sure enough they even have the same names. So if you're doing Tai Chi Chuan, we have single whip, you have raised hands, we have shoulder stroke, same names. Um, unfortunately, I don't speak Chinese very well, especially classical Chinese at all. And um, so I had this book in classical Chinese. And it took me about five years of slowly going through a dictionary trying to figure out. And finally I came across a character that was the same as I'd been studying in Tai Chi. And then that started kind of a uh, investigation. So what I'd like to do today is to go over some of these basic principles that we find uh, in Tai Chi Chuan and we also find in Hapkido. Um, and one of the neat things once I started to do that was that my Hapkido became, made a lot more sense. Many of the movements um, as, uh, as were talked about earlier today um, that look like dance all of a sudden have some really neat effective qualities to them. Um, the name of our center in Redmond, Washington is Enso Center, uh, Circle. So today we're going to focus a lot on the circular quality of Hapkido um, and the connection between people. To maintain a circle, you don't push away and you don't pull towards. So when I started in martial arts, I uh, did a lot of Taekwondo and it was very much pushing away. Uh, sometimes hard, sometimes soft, but it was this kind of aversion art. Um, then I got to study some judo, absolutely loved it. Um, the teacher I had was very much a pull towards person. Um, as we've seen today, it uh, doesn't have to be that way, but that was my initial experience. Uh, in Hapkido and Tai Chi, you neither want to push away or pull towards. And so this creates naturally these circular motions. Um, to kind of get a feel for that, um, I'd like to have everybody go ahead and grab a rope over here. This is also one of the traditional weapons of Hapkido. Excuse me. <laughs> it's a little short for jump rope, but we'll do something like it. <laughs> no, not today. <laughs> At least not during the class. Uh, maybe during the class. I <laughs> <laughs> so one of the neat things about working with a flexible weapon is that to generate force uh, you can't just push outward. Not very much happens. If you want this to go one way, first you have to go the other. In both Hapkido and Tai Chi Chuan we talk about uh, if you want to move left, first you move right. If you want to move forward, first you move back. If you want to move down, first you move up. Um, is the theory of yin and yang. In Japanese, yin and yo. In Korean, um and yang. Um, the name Tai Chi is the yin-yang symbol. 
uh, um Yang symbol. So this idea of the harmonious interaction of relative opposites. Um, and so the rope is kind of a fun way to do this. Uh, because we tend to hit each other or ourselves, um, let's go ahead and make two rows facing this direction and find some space. Yeah, so come a little bit forward here. And actually, if you have a partner right behind you, we can use, we'll use that later. If you want to be right here. Good. Everyone facing this way. Starting out very simple. Um, we're going to go ahead. Actually, let's, we didn't do yesterday. Let's do basic ready position for rope. This one's a little bit harder, but it's kind of fun. From here, as you have the rope in one hand, if the rope is long, um, ideally it should be long enough to hold this way. Uh, these, some are a little bit shorter, some are a little bit longer. From here, we're going to take it, throw forward over the elbow, and catch in a circle at your side. Those of you who are fly fishermen, this will be way too easy for you. For the rest of us, it's kind of hard. Nice. From here, casting forward, bend the elbow, oops, circle, and grab. Try not to hit your pants like I did. If you really want to and it's easy, go ahead and go the other way. Nice. So one of the things you'll notice is as you go back, if you try to bring it forward, it will speed up and curl around your arm. So to slow it down, you go in the direction that, uh, that you want to go. If you want to speed it up, you go in the direction opposite that you're going. We'll start our basic cast. So from here, as we have the circle, we're going to do an underhand throw to strike, circle, catch. Throw to strike, circle, catch. Nice. Looking good. And then once it's at your side, circle and strike forward. These were done with different weights at the end, so with the knot we were not going to hurt each other too much, um, but sometimes it would be a two to even five pound weight at the end tends to hit yourself, so be really careful if you ever do that. Okay, so now as we get this field, something a little bit easier, but also very fun, we're going to move forward as if a wheel was next to us on our right. From here, circle forward. Now particularly here, I'd like you guys to feel for the weight of the rope, how you continue the momentum. Adjust the speed by moving in the opposite direction, shortening the circle. Slow it down by moving with the rotation. And this will be the same as if you're working with a person. You want to feel their momentum and gently adjust the circle, joining the force. Nice. Okay, so from here, we're going to take our right hand, continue circling, and bring it over to our left side. Back over to our right side. Back over to our left side. And then have some fun with a figure eight. Nice. Okay. So now, as we're circling here, we've done a figure eight to bring it over to our left side. Step forward with the right foot. Pivoting to your left 180 degrees. Don't change the rope at all. It should now be going upward towards the back. Now the upward figure eight, for whatever reason, seems harder than the downward figure eight, but let's give it a try. Upward figure eight. Don't hit each other. Now you notice when you start to get tense, you shorten the circle and it speeds up. Relax. Lazy circle. 
Bring it over to your left side, circling upward. Pivot, turning to face forward, it's now circling downward. So watching one time, we have several components. I'm circling forward, I figure eight, circling forward, I pivot 180 degrees, I step forward, figure eight, pivot. The entire time, the rope is spinning the same way. If it's difficult for you, that's good. If it was easy, that's terrible. <laughs> Took me a long time. Okay, looking good. Am I doing the back? Keep going. This way. That way. And then just turn back this way. Right. So this really doesn't change. From here, it's going here. I step over to here. I look over here. I step over to here. The wheel hasn't changed at all. Hours and hours. Looking good, you guys. Oh, we got it. It's happening. If it's too easy for you, switch hands. Or switch hands and cheating. Really nice. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to shorten the circle by using our other hand. So we're going to join the downward force here by bringing this hand here and we're going to gently move it from one side to the other. Give it a try. And you start it on the right side. You can do the other way, but it's easier this way. Catch it and then push it over to the other side. Catch and push. Nice. Good. Excellent. <laughs> Okay, you guys are good. So now we're going to take and use our elbow. So the elbow creates the pivot point. From here, as I'm circling here, I bring this across the circle, turn, and pull. Make sure the hand doesn't go out, just the elbow. Can you do that again? Yes. From here, I hope. I'll try. It's like you're doing an elbow strike forward, elbow strike back. Nice. What was there? I'm good. Now for me, I can always do, or not always, I can usually do the second to last technique I learned. The last one never seems to work for me. So we'll learn one more, and then hopefully this one will feel more stable. From here, I'm going to circle downward, and then I bow, and I bow. Circling to one side, head moves down, head moves down. <laughs> Nice. Good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you thought you were joking. Okay, so a little secret. If you pull once it's wrapped, it will unwind if it hasn't gone too far. Be careful with your neck this way. Um, let's, instead of doing it in the neck, let's use the body. From here, sideways above the head, watch out for each other. I let it circle around my body, grabbing with the other hand. From here, it circles over the bicep, 
around here. Ideally, both elbows are inside. And the reason is, is once I have this position, I shrug my shoulders and it speeds it up. I can come this way, around, and pull. Nice. Looking good. So more important than getting the rope to do a specific thing is getting this feel of where the momentum is, of this circle, and feeling a gentle pressure and being able to move with that gentle pressure. We'll do one last one. From here, as it's above the head, if we go around low, I pick up my left foot, I pick up my right foot, back above. Feel the momentum, move one way, move the other way. <laughs> so with this one, as you're going here, shift your weight away and then shift it towards it and then let it release. I shift my weight to the right, I strike to the left, I move to the right. See, we do get to jump rope. <laughs> nice. Okay, let's go ahead and set the circles, um, set the circles, set the ropes on the back edge of the mat and find a partner. So one of the ways we can see this connection is by the initial techniques that we do. And we'll start with some push hands today. Has anyone done push hands before? Tai Chi push hands? You don't have to be good. <laughs> so in Tai Chi push hands, if David and I are working together, our right foot is forward and our hands are here. The other hand is here, just like there was a two-year-old child standing beside us. Ideally, these two bones fit into these two bones here. If looked at from above, the arms form that same yin-yang shape, that same Tai Chi. In Korean, we say Tai Guk. From here, I want to keep the distance between my heart and my hand constant. So we call it pushing hands, but really it's more of sensing hands. So if we turn at the angle here. From here, I shift with my legs back and forth, creating a circle. Just like the rope, we want to feel that momentum move around. Really easy, Tai Chi shape, using your legs, no stepping. Um, what I do wrong all the time is I lift up my toes so don't do that. Uh, they'll know it was me. <laughs> With your partner. Nice. So here the elbow is going to stay constant like an unbendable arm. Yeah. And then here moves. The waist moves most. Nice. Make sure your heels stay on the ground and the distance between your heart and your hand stays the same and the distance between your heart and their heart stays the same. Really nice, you guys. You have a beautiful infinity symbol. Generally, this one will move out to form the outer circle. But there's a lot of reasons to do the other. Nice. I can see the two-year-old. Nice, you guys. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move from this into what we call Hoshin Sul, which is a form of Taijutsu. Um, if, if you would, from here, instead of taking back of the wrist to back of the wrist and trying to do a joint lock here, I want to move with this circle, keeping the distance between us constant while I'm facing him. From here, as I circle outward, I move over to the angle and turn. Notice here, I'm still facing him. The distance between us is relatively constant. 
from here, circling outward. If I try to do this over here, he can start to feel that, and I'm off balance. So from here, I've moved towards him, he's absorbed that force, it's circled outward, I move over, here and here, I'm facing him, here and here. If we want to go farther down, we don't push here, we gently elongate this hand. There's almost no force. In fact, if I move from here and I start to have the technique working and I put power here, he's stable. I've given him his balance. So again, from here, I circle this way. If it didn't work on the first pass, move again. Circling, circling. Don't feel you need to make the technique work right away. From here, I slide gently forward. I turn and guide. Thank you. Cool, thank you. With your partner. Nice, so stay right there. Oh, you're good. This is pulling into his foot. If we look at a line between his feet and pull perpendicular to it with this hand. This hand. Yeah. That's it. So this is going to circle outward. It's called ward off and it moves this way. Let your right foot slide slightly forward and then your left foot steps as well. Now here, stay there. You're good. From here, see his feet here? They're strong this way. If you pull this way, he's totally, well, he's relatively stable. We want from here to pull this way. I know they're there. So it goes this way, out, Oh, there. I see. Right. 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 So from here, if we're working together, as I move this way, here, I want him to feel power this way. That gets the line up of the feet. Then I pull this perpendicular to it. Right. Thank you. Nice. Now the power went with this hand. Actually, we'll, we'll do this as a group. This is good. Okay. Okay. One of the other basic principles is, uh, with this yin and yang principle, this um and yang principle, is power from your right foot moves most efficiently to your left hand. Power from your left foot mo moves most efficiently to your right hand. Seems very complex, but it just means when you're, there's no weight on your right foot, your right hand is able. You're with no weight on your left foot, your left hand is able. So from here, if we're working together, if I could, from this position, as I do my initial step, this hand doesn't have so much power. This hand has power. As the weight moves into this foot, this hand naturally floats up and has power. Then from here, I shift my weight in this way, pushing with this hand. As the weight shifts to my left foot, my right hand again has power. Right foot weight is off of my right foot and guides this way. If you find yourself here, and then you move this way, again, you've hit a wall. So from this position, this is great, just start one. Shift the weight to one foot, and give weight power to the opposite hand. Then shift weight to the other foot, give power to the opposite hand. Shift, 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 <laughs> shift, shift. Thank you. Nice. Really nice. Watch your toes. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Nicely done. Okay, if if I could from here, we miss every once in a while. I'm circling this way and I go, oops, too late. I can't get him to move this way and flow with him. So from here, this hand is going to come here. I draw this hand here, 
rotating over to here. Now from this position in this kind of balance taking, we want to go perpendicular to the line between the feet. If I push here, he's stable. If I pull here, he's stable. If I rotate this in a circle perpendicular to the line between his feet, not so much stable. Takes very, very little force. In fact, if I use more force, he's a mountain. So from here, we get the flow this way. He's moved in as if it was a punch or a strike. I absorb this. This gently guides to here. From here, it feels like he can go here. As he touches my shoulder or jaw, as he pushes on my shoulder or jaw, the more it goes. Um, my first teacher I worked with this with, he asked me to really hit him. I was like this high in the air. It was really fun. Um, <laughs> but it was a surprise. Uh, two things in this to make that work. This hand needs to be between my heart and his heart. If it's here and he pushes, he has me. If this is between my heart and his heart and he pushes, he starts to fly this way. Um, I didn't draw his hand over here. He brought it down as if to touch. I'm just not giving him any force. So I'm not holding it here and I'm not drawing it out here. I'm here when his force creates this circle. I keep that circle constant. If we just touch here and here, we have that circle just like the single whip, like the chain whip. As we rotate that circle, it starts to move like the whip does. Thank you. Yeah. Number two, Kodagash. If you can do it at a certain speed, try slower. If you can do it with a certain amount of force, try less. If you guys stay right there, this is really good. If you just adjust this in between the two of you, but maintain the rotation. And you're being really nice and kind of hanging out here, but if you reach to touch him, and he pulls this in the middle, let me feel. So not drive it out. You don't drive it out. You want this actually to be from here. We want this to be right here in between. Two fingers here as he's punching me here. I want to just connect here. And so as he touches my head, <laughs> the more he goes. I can try. Yeah. <laughs> That's really nice. If you keep it right between you, you would have landed on him. So that was good. <laughs> So yeah, if this comes here, grabbing the thumb, right, stay there. Now if you pull this between your heart and his heart, a line between the two, right there. It doesn't feel like you have any twist, but if he reaches over to touch you, here, he starts to move that way. <laughs> nice. So classic Aikido. This way, I did for many years. Um, this one is, is not a, to replace it, just different. It draws up along this line. So we want from here, this goes to here, this draws up along this line. It's really neat, we just go like that. Now it's not between you, so see how powerful she is? Take this and bring it right between your heart and hers. Point her fingers toward the ceiling and just relax, soft. You can even just have this finger. The thumb doesn't even have to be there. She reaches out to touch this hand and as she pushes you, you want this, stop for just a sec, from here, if I could. This way, here and here, we want this just like this. When she pushes on my hand, So if we're here and here, you've come, I've come here, you're going to sock me in the jaw, as you do, mm -hmm. you can feel how that moves that way. Oh, okay. I moved this way. So